How unstable is Arch Linux is a question that has been asked by countless people, both new and old to Linux. And the reason why I'm talking about this today is because I saw this post here. So how unstable is Arch in your experience? I'm interested in Arch, but afraid of using it as a desktop slash daily driver. Now, the reason this question basically exists is because Arch has this notoriety of being a really hard distro to use and also being a really unstable distro. I'm not really sure why the second one exists. I kind of get the first one just because of the installation process. But for stability, I'm not really sure how this ended up happening. So what I wanted to talk about today was my experience using Arch Linux, whether I think it's actually stable or if it's just being a complete mess to use. And I guess along with this, whether I'd much rather be using something else. Now you can probably quickly guess the answer to the second question, but we'll talk about that a bit more when we get to it. Now, firstly, we have to define what we actually mean by stability, because in terms of software, stability actually has a couple of different meanings. So we've got the idea of a stable release and also system stability. Now, Arch Linux doesn't really have an idea of a stable release. There's no such thing as say like, Arch 20.2, Arch 19.5, like you would have with something more like Ubuntu. There's not really the idea of a stable version of Arch. It's just always getting updates. It's not a set version of Arch Linux. Now, what we're talking about today is system stability. So things like, does the kernel just crash out of nowhere? Do programs just randomly die? If you configure it wrong, does it just not work? Things like this. So when we're talking about system stability, it's actually a couple of different questions. And you probably got that idea from the examples I just brought up. So is the kernel itself stable? Are the packages stable? Now, when we're talking about are the packages stable, there's a couple of different things we can talk about here as well. So are the official packages stable? Are the AUR packages stable? And if you compile programs yourself, are those gonna be stable as well? I guess we can just put that in the package section as well. And also are the user configurations also stable? Now let's start with the kernel stability because this is the easiest question to answer. So in the time that I've been using Arch Linux, I've had, I would say, I think one kernel panic. So a kernel panic is basically where the kernel detects that something's wrong and it just shuts off generally to just keep your hardware safe. Now, this happened on a old laptop, the old laptop I was making these videos on. And I've done a video talking about that laptop. It had a lot of hardware faults. So my suspicion is something went wrong with the hardware and the kernel just didn't know what to do. So it thought, okay, well, I'm just gonna shut down because that's just the only thing that makes sense to do right now. So I would chalk that up more to my hardware being at fault there than the kernel itself. Now, the reason why it doesn't really make sense to say, is the Arch Linux kernel unstable? is because you would know about it on other distros as well, because the reason why you can take, say, a Debian package and then put it onto Arch Linux and it just works, or compile something on Arch and put it on Debian and it just works, is because the kernels are basically the same. There are some slight tweaks between each of the different kernels, but the reason why programs that are compiled for Linux just pretty much work anywhere on Linux is because all of the kernels are pretty much the same. So unless you had a distro that went really far out there with changes, it wouldn't really make sense to say the kernel isn't stable unless the kernel for desktop Linux isn't stable. And Arch Linux, it's not one of those distros that go crazy with changes. And Arch Linux isn't one of those distros that goes crazy with changes. But the Linux experience isn't a monolithic experience. Now, before someone makes the joke, yes, I know the kernel is monolithic. What I mean is that you have the kernel and then there's a section of Linux that you have complete control over, and that is your packages. So could there be a problem with the packages you install? And yes, there could be. This is a much harder question to answer though, because in this case, Arch Linux, along with any other distro, is as stable as you want it to be. Now, what do I mean by this? So even if you're just installing official packages, which tend to be tested quite a bit more, you're still going to run into some problems mainly you're gonna have manual intervention problems. Now, a manual intervention is basically where some file or some sort of problem happens that your package manager can't deal with. Say you updated a program and then it didn't delete a file that it was supposed to delete. So then you'd have to go and delete that yourself. That would be a manual intervention. So that's generally the only stuff you sort of see with the official packages. But if you go and install every single official package, you are bound to run into some problem with something that's a bit old or something that wasn't tested as well and that might cause a bit of a problem. So if you're just not caring what you install and you just install anything without thinking about it, yes, 
you are going to have a really, really unstable system. But if you install programs that you know about, and install programs that people have tested, and install programs that have been updated, if you're just doing that, there's no reason why your system shouldn't be stable. And the same is also going to hold true for the AUR. Now, these packages tend to be less tested because obviously it's very easy to get something into the AUR and they'll still have the same sort of manual intervention problem. So an example of this was with Polybar, which is a frequent one that actually does break. I could very easily replace Polybar and not have this problem, but basically Polybar relies on a program called JSON CPP, and it relies on the version that it was built with. So if JSON CPP updates, well now Polybar doesn't work. So basically to fix that, you have to rebuild Polybar and then it'll just work fine. So you have cases of this where programs do break like that. But generally with programs that are really popular like Polybar, it's a well-documented problem. But not every problem is gonna be well-documented. So one example of this is when I was on Bash, I was using a prompt called Spaceship Starship. Whichever the cross-platform one is, I'm pretty sure it was Spaceship. So I had that installed on Bash, and when I switched over to ZSH, it worked perfectly fine except for one thing. And basically, I use Vim mode and ZSH, and I used it in Bash as well. And I like to have it so when I switch over from normal mode to insert mode, it'll change my cursor, just so I can have a visual representation of which mode I'm in. But for whatever reason, it just wouldn't work when I had Spaceship installed. I don't know why it happened. I switched over to a different prompt, and it just worked perfectly fine. So there was some sort of conflict that was going on there. So this wasn't a problem that really anyone had talked about. So you might run into problems like that where no one has an easy solution for the software you have installed and you just have to go and try something else. Now another problem with installing stuff from the AUR is you might have stuff that's actually out of date but hasn't actually been marked as out of date. Now one example I came across very recently was with Transmission Remote CLI and with TREMP. I'm not sure how to say it, it's T-R-E-M-C. So it's just a weird pronunciation. Anyway, basically they are both interfaces for Transmission. And what happened was Transmission had an update to 3.0. But the problem was that these two programs had a hard-coded maximum supported version of Transmission. So now those packages are out of date. But no one had actually gone and checked them to mark them as out of date. It's very easy to fix them. All you had to do was just change the maximum supported version number. But... The version that's actually available that you can download from the AUR is out of date and the programs just don't work at this point. Let's move on to compiling stuff yourself. Now, in this case, you are basically on your own. So you're gonna have all of the same problems that existed for the official packages and also for the AUR packages. But in this case, there's probably not gonna be much help for you. Now, for the more popular programs, there obviously will be some help. If you try to compile Vim by yourself, or you try to compile any of the suckless utilities, or Chromium, or Firefox, things that are popular, you'll generally be fine compiling by yourself. But this is where you have to be very, very careful, and you have to make sure you're actually auditing your code. So when you download from the AUR, you have that comment section there where you can basically outsource your auditing to someone else. When you're compiling yourself though, you generally don't have this luxury. So if you're going to compile some random GitHub project that no one has ever compiled except for the developer, make sure you check what's going on in that code base because if you don't, you might introduce some sort of security hole. You might download some really buggy software. It's just not going to be a good experience. So in this case, make sure that you know what you're doing. As I said earlier, your distro is going to be as stable as you want it to be. If you're just compiling random stuff off of GitHub, don't be surprised when stuff starts breaking. You're kind of doing that to yourself. And don't obviously run random commands you see online. This isn't just true for Arch. This is true for every distro. If you see a random command online, do not run it. Make sure you go and check what that command does, especially if it's a command that converts a hex value into a string. I know what that command is. That is basically a command to delete your root. And it's done like that to obfuscate it just to troll people with it. So make sure you know what you're running and make sure you know what you're installing because otherwise, as with any other distro, you're not going to be in for a good time. So what about your configurations? This one might even be harder to say if there's a problem with Arch Linux because in this case, you are entirely in control of this. If you write some sort of weird configuration that just breaks everything, well, that's kind of your fault. You did that to yourself. So an example of this would be something like, say you're writing configuration for your XORG server, say you're doing something like 
configuring your DPMS settings and you configure it wrong, you forget to end a section or something. If you do that, then your Xorg server just will not start. Well, you did this to yourself. This isn't a problem with Arch, this isn't a problem with Xorg, this is something that you did to yourself. Or, say with your Xnet RC, say you don't remember to fork your programs into the background and your desktop environment or your window manager just doesn't start. Well, once again, you kind of did this to yourself. And that's kind of a common thread with a lot of the stuff in here. If something breaks, a lot of the time you have just done it to yourself. If you've installed some weird package and it breaks something, well, that's kind of your fault for installing weird packages. If you don't test out your software properly and there's some weird conflict, well, you didn't test out your software properly and there's some weird conflicts. That's kind of something you did to yourself. If there's some sort of manual intervention that needs to take place and you don't do the manual intervention, well, once again, you've done that to yourself and you're the only one to blame if that doesn't work. And a lot of the stuff pretty much boils down to, well, if it doesn't work, you probably broke something yourself. And I would say that's pretty much true for all of Linux. And not just all of Linux, all of computing. If you're on Windows even, and you download some random program and it installs a bar in your web browser, well, you're kind of at fault for installing random pieces of software like that. If you're on Mac OS and you install something weird, I know it's a bit harder to do on Mac because it goes through the App Store. I whatever it's called on whatever it's called over there. Even though it's coming through the App Store, there's going to be things on there that weren't tested as well as they should have been. So don't just go and install random stuff on there. If you're doing that well, you're kind of just asking for problems. So like with all of computing and like with all of Linux, Arch Linux is just as stable as you want it to be. If you don't install random stuff, if you make sure your configurations work, if you just keep an eye on what's happening on your system, it's going to be pretty stable. That's been my experience using Arch, and that seems to be most people's experience as well. And to answer my other question from the start, well, with Arch, it's just gotten out of my way most of the time. I generally don't think about the fact that I'm on Arch until I need to do something Arch-specific, like do some Pac-Man configuration or anything like that. Most of the time, I don't even think about the fact that I'm on this distro, besides also, I guess, the AUR. So I think that's pretty much everything I want to talk about in this video. Let me know down below, has your experience on Arch been stable? Has it just been an absolute mess to work with? What about just desktop Linux in general? Has it been stable? Have you just not had a good time with it? Are you actually a Windows user and you're thinking of coming over to Linux? Let me know your thoughts down below. Before I go, I'd like to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Gabriel, Peter, Lee, Rode, Tony Donald, Oki, Larry, and Zilver. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or anything else you want to get a small kickback for it. Also remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech of a T, available on Library and BitTube. And also this channel is available on Library, BitTube, and now also BitChute. So feel free to go check it out on any of those other platforms. Also remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.